Peculiar case of the electric constable tells the story of John Tor, a man who throughout his life was desperate to be a Quaker. He was accepted and then rejected for marrying out. And he was in trouble financially a couple of years after that, so he resorted to forgery. Forgery was actually a capital offence at that time. He was reprieved, however, sent to Australia, sent to hospital when he became ill, and there he realised Sydney had the need for a retail pharmacy. He had the particular skills for that as he worked as a, essentially a salesman for a retail pharmacist back in England. So he set up such a retail pharmacy and became an extremely wealthy man because of it. With that wealth, when the Quakers back house and Walker came to Sydney, he was able to support their community and to build the first Quaker meeting house in New South Wales. And ultimately with the same wealth, he went back to England. And that's when the events of the peculiar case of the electric constable began. Astonishingly, there'd been very little written about him in Australia, even though he probably, one could argue, he was the most influential convict of the 160,000 transported to Australia. His influence was of course unwitting, but the consequences of it were that it launched the communication revolution. At that time, the electric telegraph promoters were really struggling to get interest in the telegraph. So it wasn't until this day, New Year's Day 1845 in London, when the electric telegraph pursued John Tall, the tipping point happened that ultimately led to the launch of the communication revolution.